respected listeners, <clears throat> we cannot judge if any good deed we are doing is a small good deed or a big good deed. The goodness of the deed is judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why our pious predecessors, our elders, they will relentlessly go enthusiastically doing small good deeds with a lot of enthusiasm and zeal. Because they would say, we do not know in which of these small good deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept my forgiveness. Because when they would do these big good deeds, I would rather be sitting over there and listening to one of the khatibs over here rather than me being the khatib over here. Because in my talk, only Allah knows is there any show off, any riya, or any recognition from myself hidden in it. And that is why the elders are very scared of, very, of the doing good deeds. But small good deeds, Allah Akbar. Smiling at someone, saying Jazakum Allah khairan, may Allah reward you with their hearts. Helping the needy, quietly making dua for someone. Quietly making two rakat salat and making dua for someone. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saw a person in paradise and he asked Angel Jibreel alayhi salam what brought him into paradise. Jibreel alayhi salam said, O Prophet of Allah, one good deed. One small good deed, O Prophet of Allah. There was a thorny bush on the street. He removed that bush from the street and Allah loved it so much he made him enter paradise. Rasulullah sallallahu talks about a woman, an adulterous woman. She gave water to a thirsty dog. She could have said, I have done so many bad deeds, what good deed, what good is going to do this one good deed? But she went and went ahead and gave water to the dog, the thirsty dog. And because of that one good action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave her. If she had said, well, what is this good action going to do? She would have been deprived of the everlasting forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what shaitan, the devil, does to us. He trivializes the good deeds and the, and the bad deeds to us. Our minds are fascinating machines Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. When you're sitting here, all kinds of thoughts come to you, looking at me, looking at the beautiful weather looking around us, walking on the street, all kinds of thoughts come to us. And if some thought comes to our mind saying, just do this good deed, Shaitan says, well, you know, it's a small thing, you know, what difference is going to make? He trivializes that. You're not that pious anyway. And if there is something evil, some small evil action which we think is small, Shaitan comes and says, we've done so many of these small things anyway, what, you know, how is it going to hurt? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, every evil is being seen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every atom's weight of good you do, you will see it on that day, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every Adam's weight of bad you do, you will see it on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. But then there is this law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there is this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wants, He can judge us by the good deeds we do, by the bad deeds we do. But the other law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive us with all the bad we have done. With one good deed which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man kayyasadana nafsahu amila lima ba'd al maut. The smart and shrewd person is that person who prepares for death before death comes to him or her. Wal ajiz and a foolish person is that. Who follows his desires. Who follows his desires and does whatever he wants to do. And then he has high hopes in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa called that person a foolish person. If I'm hurting myself, bleeding myself, and I'm going to say I'm going to put medicine on it, you will call me a foolish person. Our elders respected listeners. Any small good deed they do, that is why we should not hesitate in doing any small good deed. We do not know on which good deed our forgiveness is hidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Prophet sallallahu said, even if you give a date, a single date in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help someone with ikhlas, with sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you a reward equal to Mount Uhud, said Prophet sallallahu Allah has created us, Allah could have made us a, a rock, respective listeners. He could have made us a tree even better, or a flower, or even a tree a better, even better. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us human beings. Created us for eternity, for infinity, Allah. Forever and ever, respective. One stage is going to come, you're going to die. We're just going to be transitioned to the next world. But then that's it. It's eternal life after that. So every good deed that comes our way, when virtue comes our way, when the good deed comes into our way, respected listeners, we should not delay or do it later, say do it later, because that may not, that may never come back again to us. If you have a, if I have a cold attitude, I'll, I'll do that later. I'll pray later. I'll read Quran later. I may not get that opportunity or that as easy an opportunity as I'm having now. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ Race towards the forgiveness of your Lord. وَسَابِقُوا Be the first ones, foremost among ones to do good deeds. وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ and compete with one another in doing good deeds. Allah says in the Quran, فَاسْتَبِقُ الْخَيْرَاتِ Compete with each other in doing good deeds. Allah is telling us. فَقُولِ فَوْلِي هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ الرَّيْبِ الْمُسْتَقْفِرُ يَفْرِ اللَّهِ وَالْمَقْرِمُ الرَّحِيمُ Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem al The companions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to compete for doing good deeds respected listeners. Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu always had an eye on Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu on his good deeds. He could, he could have an eye he could have had an eye on Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu when Allah had blessed him with a lot of wealth. He could have had an eye on Abdul Rahman ibn Auf radiallahu ta'ala anhu to whom Allah had blessed a lot of wealth. But he ignored those material, worldly material things and he was looking at Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he knew that competing against Abu Bakr was a very tall order. That is why when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked for anything they can bring to help the Muslims in the expedition to Tabuk, the last expedition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umar radiallahu ta'ala packed half of his wealth and brought to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at his wealth and he said, oh, Umar, what did you leave for your family behind? Umar radiallahu ta'ala said, oh, oh, Prophet of Allah, I left half of my wealth behind. Remember, the paychecks was not a concept at that time. Monthly paychecks, weekly paychecks, bi-weekly paychecks. They had no idea when they would get the money back afterwards. Then here comes Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When he heard the words of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he packed everything in his house, whatever he had. Including the nails that were on the wall, he took out the nails from the wall. And then he, when he packed everything he had, he looked at his own self and he said, the clothes I'm wearing, this could be beneficial to someone. He took out a sheet, wrapped around him, and put the clothes in the back too, and put the bag on his back and came to Rasulullah 
Rasulullah sallallahu even though the wealth he had brought was much less than what Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu had brought. But Umar radiallahu ta'ala thought that this is the day I'm going to beat Abu Bakr. But when Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala bought everything he had even though he had little with him. But he bought everything with him. And he presented to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, what did you leave behind for your family? He said, oh Prophet of Allah, I left Allah and his Prophet, the name of, the, of, of, of you behind me, my family, oh Prophet of Allah. The goodness he had in the little he had respected listeners, which brought the salams of Allah azza wa jal to Abu Bakr Siddiq razi Allah ta'ala anhu at that time. One time Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting in the morning along with the companions Masjid al Nabu. It was a habit of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ask them about the dreams they had the last night or how is everybody doing. He asked the gathering, Is any one of you fasting today? It was neither the month of Shaban or Ramadan or Rajab. None of the companions said they were fasting except Abu Bakr Siddiq and said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I made intention of fasting today and I'm fasting. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa asked him, has anybody, any one of you visited a janazah, a funeral, a burial today? It's an early morning time, they have just made prayed fajr. We bury after Zuhr usually in the Bay Area or in the daytime. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said three things you should not delay. When the time of Salat comes, when a girl who has attained the age of marriageable age and a good match comes to her, that marriage should not be delayed. And number three, when the time of when the time for burial should not be delayed for the dead body, said Prophet. So the companion, Samiya wa Ta'ala, we hear and we obey. That is why the woman who used to sleep the floor in Masjid al Nabwi, when she passed away, the companions buried her in the night. Rasulullah said, Where is the lady? I don't see her this morning. The Sahaba said, oh, Prophet of Allah, she passed away last night, we buried her immediately. So Rasulullah asked, did anybody of you visit a janazah today? Early morning Fajr time. Nobody said anything. Abu Bakr Siddiq said, Ya Rasulullah, there was a janazah that was going by. I joined it. There was a few few people in the janazah. I joined them and I came to Fajr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then asked, has, is, is, has anybody of you visited a sick person today? Nobody answers. Abu Bakr Siddiq said, Ya Rasulullah, such a such person was sick. I, I went and visited him this morning before coming to Fajr. Then the fourth question, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did anybody want, did, did any one of you feed a hungry person this morning? None of them answered except Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. He said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I was coming to the masjid. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf was coming to the masjid with his son. His son was hungry, he had a loaf of bread and he gave the bread to his son. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled and said, none of these deeds when they're done will accept that these, these deeds will put the person into paradise. Every door of paradise will call marhaba, marhaba, welcome Abu, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What kind of an awesome man he was, respected listeners, doing this four deed before the Fajr prayers. That is why Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if the iman, the faith of the entire human beings is placed on one scale of the path, and the faith, Iman of Abu Bakr is placed on the second scale. His Iman will outweigh the Iman of the entire Ummah, said Prophet One of the Khatibs, he was saying, I was listening to him, MashaAllah, he was saying, the Iman of Abu Bakr, the, the reason his Iman was so weighty, because the cells in the human body, Allah has created the building blocks of the human body. Each of us has 37.2 trillion cells, respectively. 37.2 trillion cells, only Allah knows how many, how much exactly is there. We don't have the exact count, but there is the approximate count. 37.2 trillion cells of Iman of Abu Bakr weighed on one scale, and the Iman of the entire Ummah on the other scale. His Iman will outweigh the Iman of the Ummah, said Prophet. In spite of that, in spite of that, you say, I wish I was a hair on the body of a mu'min, of a believer. I wish I was a blade of grass on whom the beast would graze upon. I wish I was that bird sitting on the tree who doesn't have to give any account, account to Allah on the day of judgment. Abdullah bin Mubarak, rahmatullahi one of the great muhaddithin, he would say, I used to live in the company of the rich people. And I was always sad and depressed. They had better, home than, better homes than my home. 
They would wear better clothes, they had better transportation than me. I was sad and gloomy and depressed. And then I started in the company of the poor people. Then I saw that my house was better than their house. My clothes were better than their clothes. My transportation was better than theirs. Then the depression was gone. The gloominess was gone. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave us a golden rule, respected listeners. Hitting on the psychology of the human being. He said, look at the people who don't have much as you do. Then you'll be grateful and thankful to Allah. But look at those who are more pious to you for you to propel to do more good deeds. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تحقرن معروف الشين أو كما قال that do not belittle any, any good deeds. Do not belittle any good deeds, said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Month of Ramadan is coming, respected listeners. A golden opportunity, the term, the golden opportunity that is created for the month of Ramadan. From now on, from this month of Rajab, inshallah, we start some praying some two extra salat, respected listeners. Prophet said that never a person tries or leaves something that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will replace him or her with a better good deed. Allah will replace him doing better good deed. If you're spending a lot of time on computer or TV, and let's make an intention, respect I'm going to cut it down. Of course, you're going to have some withdrawal symptoms for that. Praying two rakat extra salat, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. Our salat should be the best time we have ever spent. That should be the greatest moment of our lives, respected listeners. One such that to Allah Azza wa should be the greatest moment of our lives. If I'm controlling my anger, if I'm forgiving someone, these should be the greatest moments of my life. Month of Rajab, 27th Rajab. Many scholars say that was the night Rasulullah sallallahu ascended the heavens, the journey of Isra and Miraj. And Allah gave him 50 salats, but he reduced it to five salats, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, looking at all the condition of all of us. But the reward Allah has kept equal to 50 salats out of his mercy. Let us start praying five times regularly, respected listeners. We do not know what is going to happen tomorrow. Yesterday we buried a 27-year-old young person from this community, San Ramon community. 27-year-old. One of my friends, he was 61 years old. Yesterday we buried him too. Regular in salat. People in, he moved from Fremont, ICF to Brentwood. Regular in Fajr and Isha Salah. He didn't show up in Fajr yesterday. The Imam and the Musallis asked, where is Brother Kabir, Ahmed Kabir? They said he passed away a couple of hours ago. He was being waited in the house of Allah. That's how we should be waited when we pass away, respect the Life is going to just gonna blink of the eye, respect the Allah is giving us month and month, month, year after year, this month of Rajab, Shaban, and Ramadan. May Allah guide me, guide us, all of us, to take maximum advantage of these times. Rabbana adina fi dunya hasanatu wa fil akhirati hasanatu wa fina adab al nar. Rabbana la tazib zulubana ba'di hazaydana wa hadlana fi dhati bi rahma. Inna ka anta wahab. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah ya'amur bil adi wa ihsan. Wa itai di al-qurba. Wa inhani ta'ashai wa al-munkar al-baghi. Ya'idhu bin al-alam na dhakkaroon. Fathkuruni athkurkum. Wa shkuruni wa la dhakkaroon. Aqib salam. Thank you.